Hello everyone and welcome to episode 27 of In Case You Missed It and as always I am joined by Tommy. Hello. I don't know why but even though we're in separate locations I always put my arm out and but then I also like to introduce you as if we're doing it recorded but one we're not in the same location so I can't even see you and two it's not recorded anyway <laughs> so it doesn't make a difference. Wow. I don't think you ever did that when we was there in person either. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. But I've just suddenly started doing it. Um, <laughs> if you're new to this show, this is your first time listening, uh, welcome. This is your place to catch up on all the week's film news, trailers, box office. Uh, if you missed it during the week, hence why it's called In Case You Missed It. Yep, I'm doing that joke again for everyone who listens regularly. Um, let's jump into the trailers this week. Uh, the yeah. uh, first one we got was for Bloodline. We've got uh, Sean William Scott. He's back. Was it? Wait, I got it wrong. Did I get the right way around? Yeah, I did. Yeah, you got it right. Where did he go? I don't know. I feel like he just does American Pie and <laughs> Road Trip, and that was it. Isn't? <laughs> well, right, did he make those Goon movies? Did they make a sequel to that? Oh yeah, they did Goon, but I didn't watch what? them, so they didn't... went over my does, head. Th- doesn't register on your radar. Doesn't register. Enough. Yeah, so um, I just picture him as Stifler still. Um, but what did you think so, of this trailer? Is it just me, or is this just like a a Dexter ripoff? It, yeah, yeah, it is a little bit. I haven't watched that much with Dexter, but I've got it a, I just did get similar like sort of vibes from it. A massive, massive Dexter ripoff to me. Yeah, I, I don't know what. I don't know. It looks good though. I don't know what it is. I've got a similar sort of tone to um, what was the blind guy one a couple of years ago. Uh, you probably didn't watch it because you don't watch horror films, but no. But I know what you're talking about. Yeah, that, don't breathe. I got there. Don't uh, breathe. That's it. Yeah. Um, I don't know what it was about this trailer, but I got that sort of vibe from Dexter. Is definitely makes a lot. I don't of know. Sense. Don't breathe. Look, a better trailer than this. I thought it looked pretty good. This looked terrible to me. I don't know. I, don't, I wouldn't say terrible. It just looked pretty generic. It looks like the sort of film you get on a streaming service. It just. I don't know. Generic seemed to be the front line for me. I I really don't know what it was. It just is like the sort of film that would like come out to like thirty percent on Rotten Tomatoes, and then no one sort would see it. If I told you the director of this film hasn't directed a feature film before, would that make sense? Um, potentially. What what has he directed? He's directed uh, a documentary short called Twenty Minutes in two thousand seven. And then he did a short film called Lost Loved, and then in 2010, and then in 2017 he did a TV special documentary called Election Day: Lens Across America. And now right. he's doing this. Okay. Um, he seems to be known for the way his main role is producing, but he hasn't produced anything of note that I've heard of. They hmm. always just seem to be documentaries, so it's an interesting one. That's why he's... I don't know what it is about this story that suddenly grabbed him. <laughs> Henry Jacobson. Um, yeah, I don't know. But I'm going to take it that that's a, a big no from you. Oh, yes, it's a big no from me. Is it a bigger no than... Because I said that Sex Tuplets was the a b- biggest no I'd ever given. Would you put it on that sort of level for you? <laughs> no, it's just not my sort of film. Yeah, and... Maybe there'll be another horror film that won't be your sort of film later on. <laughs> um, oh, that, that that's a possibility. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think it's sort of maybe, like I said, it seemed like a streaming sort of service of film, the, a sort of film that I'll just put on dur- in the background while I'm doing something else, like editing or something. So I think from that aspect of it, uh, I probably might watch it, but it's not a, it's not a run out and see it unless I hear good things. Um, it's a it's a it's a maybe I think for me and uh, continuing my game from last week I think uh, Tommy will cry at this film. Tommy will not watch this film. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next trailer we got oh they're all kind of scary films this week in almost a way. and almost apart from the last one I mean apart it, from the, the only good trailer this week oh, spoiler alert <laughs> you didn't like the the what well, is the second look we got for the Adams family. There's no difference really to the other look that we got. It just looks like the same kind of okay film. I think it's a real um, uphill battle for us, a real disadvantage because the other two Adams Family films are both amazing and absolutely incredible. Mm. Um, I think the animated film is the right way to go for it. 
Um, I just don't think this trailer really did much for me. I think the other trailers have worked a lot better for me. I, the thing that I noticed during this trailer was, uh, and looked at most in this trailer, was the animation style. Because it's MGM, who, I, as far as like, off the top of my head, I can't think of an animated film they've done before. And the animation uh, didn't look great, to be honest. I don't know, when you look at like the insane level that Pixar are at, and even the level that like DreamWorks are at, and WB and everyone else, and you think of Sony with Spider Verse, they've all done their own sort of thing. This looked really like early two thousand sort of animation sort of style. Oh, I don't think it was that bad. I think it looked kind of like how Hotel Transylvania or something looked. Uh, speaking of that, is that not exactly the same film as what this is looks like? Uh, no, no, I don't think so. It looked pretty like they've got. A, I don't know. I guess it's like the Adams family is very much a yeah, of course, they're, a they're, staple. Yeah, of course, but I don't know what it. It was the scene where you see someone come in to the house and like have a look around I wonder how much of a big role it's going to be because that's, that's literally the whole of Hotel Transylvania which is obviously monsters and that sort of thing it's just it's similar in that sort of way and obviously they'll be going for the same sort of market and um, I don't know it's got a really good cast actually and now I'm looking at the cast list uh, Charlize Theron Finn Wolfhard Pom Clementiev Chloe Moretz Oscar Isaac Alice I mean, people will love the Adams family. Yeah, and like you said, uh, yeah, people know the song even if they haven't heard, watched any of the films or anything. Um, and it's just a property that people know. And I'm actually kind of more surprised that they're not remaking this as a live action one. Yeah. But obviously, animation gives its own sort of like creative freedom to do the bigger, wackier sort of stuff, which you can't do as much although I suppose with how far CGI has come you kind of can now but obviously in a different sort of way um, yeah but what was this for you yes uh, on the merits of this trailer it's a no I've, I've seen better trailers for this film I don't even remember the other trailer for this film but um, yeah again it's the sort of maybe I, I don't know the animation style really bothered me the, like as soon as I noticed that it looked not that great um, yeah, I think I'm gonna. So I I think I'm still a yes sort of because I I think these sort of children's films kind of do well and they know exactly what they are and go f going for and there seems to be some. I actually like the the f the bit where she brings the frog back to life. I thought that was fun. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna say yes because I watch everything, and uh, <laughs> that Tommy will cry at this film because he doesn't like horror films and this will remind him of horror films it will remind me that this isn't the Adams family that I love and then you'll cry hashtag where's pubert I, don't know, I haven't watched the Adams family so this is they're crazy. honestly classics they're some of the best films I think like I've, from the 90s I think I've tried to sit down and watch the first one but then I was like I'm just not feeling it they're it's so so good both I, I of them I just got to be in the, Sort of move. I'll definitely get to them before I'm sure I said this when we reviewed the last trailer for it but I'll get to it before October when this comes out um, I was going to try and segue in by saying this film is coming out in October but it's not, it's coming out in September the next one, but it looks like it should come out in October uh, <laughs> uh, another horror film for Tommy, this one Haunt, and I actually really like this trailer but um, as uh not a horror film person. You didn't? Uh, not particularly, no. It just looks like every other horror film trailer that you see. It just looks like very generic, middle of the road, nothing special, nothing screaming like, oh, this is interesting. Like, there's a few times we've had horror trailers on here where I've gone like, oh, this one I'll, you know, I'll keep listening out for because mm. it might be, you know, good and something I'm interested in. And this one is just like so generic. It looks like, you know, 12 other horror trailers we see over the last few years. I don't know what it was, but something about it grabbed me more than the normal horror trailer. Um, I, don't know, I thought the scares looked well. It looked, it looked like it was going to scare me, and uh, I find that such a hard thing to do because I'm the sort of person who will, won't just sit back and watch a film. I'll be thinking, "Oh, there's a scare going to come here," and if the scare is, if it's that predictable that you know it's coming, then it's obviously not scary. Um, whereas you get stuff like Conjuring and the It and uh, particularly James Wan who's kind of the master of doing it it was 
the timing of horror films and it works so well and I don't know why but this seems to be going into this new wave of horror films that we've got and it seems to be clever and learning from James Wan and I think that's why this one actually really worked for me and uh, again it's there's something about it which maybe just because it looks there isn't anyone recognizable in it um, and because of the horror, being a horror film they tend to go straight to streaming service kind of got that sort of similar sort of vibe to it um, but it I don't know. I it worked for me. It seems that it definitely feels like it should be something that should be out at Halloween. I feels like this film that would crush at the box office then, but because it's not out then, I'm kind of a little bit more tentative about it. Is that the right word? Yeah. Um, but it's from the the writers of uh, Quiet Place, which kind of grabs me as well. Which was I can't remember if it was in my top ten last year or not, but it should have been. Um, uh, but this time they're directing, so I, 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 I'm, I feel like I learn. I feel like they know what they're doing, and also have a little bit of faith in them. They've got some trust from me from that, um, and that's why it's kind of a, it's a yes from me. I think it's a no from me. And Tommy's gonna cry at this film when he watches it. He's not gonna see it. <laughs> How much would I have to pay you to watch it? Uh, I mean, you'd probably just have to buy me like popcorn and a drink, and I'd just go and see it. Oh, that's easy. Go on, I'll I'll let you talk about this one, which was seems to be your only yes of the week. Yeah, not only is it my only yes of the week, it is such a great trailer. Um, so the next film is uh the trailer that came out this week is for Honey Boy. Um, now I've been pretty excited for this one since people were talking about it at Sundance. So this is the one that Shia LaBeouf wrote about his own life, mm. and he's playing a character based on his own dad in it. Yeah. Uh, which I think is just room for like a really interesting performance so he's not only he's playing his own father so no one's gonna know his dad better than he, you know his, him, you know himself other than his dad him, you know so and he's a really interesting actor as well Charlotte mm. he's really talented I'm really looking forward to seeing um, was it Peanut Butter uh, yeah Peanut Butter Falcon Peanut I've Butter Falcon that's right that. yeah and I'm hearing great I mean this film is 100% of Rotten Tomatoes so there's well, and was, as well. yeah I think Peanut Butter uh, Falcon is as well okay fair enough so uh, it was picked up by Amazon Studios uh, coming out of Sundance um, and people have been talking about it uh, kind of non-stop um, this is the first sort of trailer we've seen from it uh, and I, I really cannot wait um, I think it looks amazing from the opening the opening shot like grabbed me straight away um and I knew the rest of this trailer was going to be beautiful and like the cinematography throughout the entire trailer anyone who knows me loves uh, knows I love cinematography so much and just the way that opening shot is done I, you'd like one you don't know what the film's going to be to start with what sort of film it could, it could be anything and then like once it kicks in and you get the rest of that and you see oh it's written by Chalabaf and yeah I've heard a little bit about it I haven't heard too much about it um, but it looks great I really like Lucas Hedges as well love yeah. Lucas Hedges ever since Manchester by the Sea he really just leapfrogged onto the scene as one of the heavy hitters what was he in last year there was something oh uh, I forget what it's called the film with Nicole Kidman and Russell Crowe yeah, Destroyer uh, that's it yeah and was he, was he in Lady Bird as well that was a couple of years ago yeah briefly but he just makes the best choices and he really does um, I wouldn't be again this looks like a uh, the sort of I don't know, it's obviously been at Sundance but it looks like the sort of film that'll be potentially up there when we're talking Oscar films I don't know if it'll be too early around that I don't know we don't actually have a release date now I'm looking at it uh, US oh 8th November for America UK don't have a release date yet but please release it uh, whichever studio is Amazon in the UK do we get Amazon ones oh yeah we had Manchester by the yeah but it's funny we don't get uh, we didn't have Roma did we last year or did we did you watch Roma on the big screen no which one was it that you watched? it was one of the Oscar films that I can't remember what it was that you went and watched I don't know um, but yeah no this was a huge yes for me and I, I think Tommy is going to bore his eyes out of this one what a Netflix film that I went and watched I don't know it was it, I feel like it was 
an Oscar film. I don't know what it was. It might not have been a Netflix film. Oh, what? Did that I saw early? I think so. Green Book. Yeah, that was it. That was it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, huge, huge yes for me. And Tommy's gonna cry for about a week after he sees this film. Yeah, I mean, and it may be not too bold to predict, but uh, could be a female best director nominee. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. And or winner, and which would be great. Uh, Shia LaBeouf, he's makes he's obviously making some great choices. Uh, the strange guy. He is a strange guy, but uh, I recommend going and watching uh, Collider Live. They had the guys who directed Peanut Butter Falcon on, um, and uh, I think it was like last week. Actually, no, it was the week before. And the whole story about behind that film is and their lives, like getting to that film, is really interesting. I recommend giving it a listen. Um, and how they managed to get Shia Buff on board for this film. Oh, it's mental. Um, but it's a good story. Though. Cool. Um, that's kind of it for trailers. It's a little bit of a quiet one, but that's okay. Uh, that Because we've got plenty of headlines to talk about. Uh, the first being kind of a confirmation we knew a couple of weeks ago uh, about uh, the three people on the shortlist for director of Venom 2. And then Tom Hardy accidentally post a picture of Andy Serkis a couple of days before it was announced and then quickly took it down. Whoops. Um, and then it was officially announced anyway. Um, so we've got Andy Serkis for director of Venom 2. What do you think of that choice? It's kind of echoing I mean, he's a, he's a decent director. Uh, I don't know how much weight there are to these Venom films. I just don't know if it's a strong enough character to have a film on its own. I wasn't convinced after the first one. So we'll see after this one. But he's a good director. I like to breathe a lot. Mm. And other um, speaking he, of films you cried at. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He also uh I mean, he did a lot of B roll for uh for the Hobbit. The the Hobbit Your films, which film. uh not B roll, sorry, B unit. But um yeah. Less we said about that the better. Uh but I also didn't mind his Mowgli film. It wasn't great and it wasn't as good as Favreau's, but it was pretty good, I thought. I don't know. I see aspects of that from what we're gonna get. Because it's a darker version of the story, and I don't know if it's true or if I'm just making it up, but I think he wanted it to be darker than it actually was. I don't know if that's right. Um, but I don't know. I remember when the first Venom came out, and or the when they announced it, and there was talk about what sort of Venom film it was going to be, and the sort of Venom film that interested me more than anything was the psychological horror sort of side of it, and. Obviously, that's not what we got from... The, obviously, the film went through different iterations and that was in the early stage of it. We obviously had, as well, there was going to be an Agent venom sort of story, which obviously wasn't. Um, and, I don't know, I really wanted it to kind of go back more into the horror thing. And if they're going to bring in, like they teased at the end of... Uh, as the mid credit scene, obviously introducing Cletus Cassidy, Carnage, that's what's next year in the film going to be... <laughs> That, God, that looked awful. That, they need to sort that wig out. <laughs> I can't, I can't deal with that wig for an entire film. That was not I good. I hope he just has. I don't know what I'd want. I don't know if I want a scene of him, like getting a haircut, just <laughs> dressing. What if they they can't keep that wig for the entire film? What no. if because it's Andy Serkis, the master of motion capture, they motion capture a wig on. Just the wig. Uh, I just don't even know what to say to that. <laughs> um, I don't know. I I still would have been more interested. I don't know. It's in it. It's a really interesting one. If Andy Serkis is obviously such a known name, and there's obviously been talk about uh, his motion capture performances, whether it's Gollum or Caesar or anything else he's done. Um, apparently, he's also great in Long Shot, even though it's like unrecognizable. Um, but his motion capture performance, like, do you think that's gonna bring anything to Venom? Um, what they're gonna do with that? Because obviously, that just a good, a good insight. I think I don't think much more than that. Because there was quite a little bit of criticism, particularly towards the end fight, where you got the CGI uh, Venom and Riot. Uh, they were pretty similar colors, and you kind of lost a bit of track time which one was which. Um, obviously that's not going to happen with Carnage because he's red unless they don't make him red for whatever reason um, maybe they make him the same colour 
as his wig. Good. Do you reckon that Carnage will have that hair? Do you reckon they'll keep it? Do you think they'll play into it? Uh, I hope not. I just no, I, I hope none of that happens. I hope they just stop, stop, just stop it. I don't know. It's I don't know. I like I said. I don't. I don't really want to see any more of this franchise. But it made so much money that we're gonna see it. I'm interested to see how it will tie into Spider Man because that's the character I care about. I've seen one Venom film. I don't really want to see another one. Unless he's I'd only be it. interested if it didn't tie in at all when they just killed it. <laughs> <laughs> Even if like uh, Tom Holland showed up in this one, in number two, how would you feel about that? Because I feel like they must have to. No, I wouldn't like that. I wouldn't want it to be connected. If it was, it would be like Netflix one-way canon. P- probably, but I don't know. There was also, uh, I don't know if it was confirmed, but Sony are making... TV shows based off Spider-Man character that they own the rights to as well because that's the thing at the moment obviously TV shows of properties and I imagine it will be in the Venom universe um, so I don't know I don't know where they're going to go with that I don't know what you could do as a Venom as a TV show whether you go the only sort of TV show I'd be interested in is the Spider-Vask sort of characters The give me a Spider-Noir TV show Give me a Spider Ham TV show. That's the sort of thing I'd be more interested in than what I imagine is going to be live action knockoffs of characters we don't really care about. I don't know who they could do. I don't know either. That's, that's Sony for you. Um, yep. The next little bit of news is just a little bit of casting for uh, more casting for the Eternals because if you're not in the Eternals, you're already busy in June um, because you're only only, because they've cast everyone for those two films um, and they're bringing back Gemma Chan who played uh, Minerva in Minerva, yeah Captain Marvel Marvel. Um, obviously that character is blue she is a Kree Um, so it's interesting that they're bringing back it's not I think it is the first time MCU have done it actually Uh, but we've kind of spoken to length about the Eternals and what it could be I don't want to go too much down that Um, but they've also I think it was Jeff Snyder broke as well after THR broke that Gemma Chan was in he broke that Barry Keon or Keon I don't know how you pronounce his name yeah from Dunkirk Dunkirk. and the killing of a sacred deer Um, I actually really like him I'd love to see him in more stuff he's also going to be in the Eternals I think that's a great move for him and his career if it's a big role uh, I'd like to see him have a big role. I think he could do it, like killing in a sacred, killing of a sacred deer. Um, the film didn't live up to the, what I wanted it to be, but I thought there were some great performances in there. Um, I've got a question because Gemma Chan is playing a different character. Is there someone? Is she? Well, I imagine it would be a different character. Why? Doesn't Minerva die? Actually, no, she doesn't. She doesn't know. I think about it. it's one of the other ones that dies. But I, I, what was your question going to be? I was gonna. My question was going to be, if you could recast someone in the MCU, who would you want to bring in, playing a different role? So say oh. you could get. Because it's happened before, isn't it? It happened with uh, like Spider-Man's teacher. He was in the Incredible Hulk. Was he? Yeah, he's like the one of the nerdy guys. He's like the computer expert. Was that him? I, I yeah. Know. Um. Yeah, is there anyone... I don't know, the only other one I can think of that's happened to sort of in the MCU would uh, be the Netflixy stuff crossing over, but they're not... That was one way kind of... Uh, it doesn't count. It's like, yeah. now you look at Mahershala Ali, is now obviously going to be Blade, and he was in Luke Cage, and I can't remember the name of the woman who was in Civil War and Luke Cage as well. So maybe Luke Cage is just not canon. Um yeah is there an actor you'd want to bring out from maybe they're an alien or something or maybe it's a someone who's a human who you want to play an alien and have a different look you could go that way around uh i mean i think the obvious one's vin diesel yeah vin diesel or bradley cooper Uh, because i think bradley cooper would make a pretty decent adam warlock or maybe he's a bit too old yeah i see it more as like a cool like osborne Oh, he would be a great. I think. Imagine Vin Diesel as Osborne. 
That would be something. <laughs> <laughs> that would be madness. Um, as we're talking Marvel, we'll talk uh, a little bit of sort of Star Wars, but not really Star Wars, in that Benioff and Wise have obviously working on uh, whatever their whatever Star Wars trilogy movies they make series of films they're making at the moment. They've also just signed a, a nine-figure deal uh, into the hundreds of millions of dollars with Netflix, um, which is I find really interesting because obviously they're with Disney at the moment, and you would have thought with Disney they would have Disney would have offered them a contract to do something perhaps with Disney Plus or just keep them on with Star Wars, but it seems obviously that Netflix have obviously come in with a huge deal. And it seems like Netflix are the ones that, are, at the moment, especially with when you've got a Warner Brothers who are producing all their content and bringing out a streaming service, and what Disney are doing with their streaming service, Netflix seem to be the one really uh, bigging up original content. And I think that's probably been the draw for Benioff and Wise here. Even HBO Now or Max or whatever. I suppose that falls under Warner Brothers, but yeah. I mean, potentially, but I mean, there's a lot of, uh, you know, other IP that Netflix sort of acquire. Like they've got Dark Crystal coming out yeah, soon. Yeah, that's true. To name one. Um, so I, I don't know. It might just be, it might be the other way. It might, they might be pitching ideas around, you know. They might not want to just make Star Wars. They might have just been pitching an idea around that they had and Netflix took the bait. I mean, the, well, it's a deal where they'll get to see, uh, they'll write, direct and produce stuff on Netflix, I don't know what the deal is, um, like the details of it, we don't know too much, but uh, like I know how much you love Game of Thrones and the last season um, I uh, love Game of Thrones <laughs> most of it um, but how much, and I know you're not particularly excited for what their Star Wars is going to be um, no. but what would you want to see from them, given what they did with Game of Thrones, what, what would you want to see from them I would want to see them make a great pilot and then hand it over to other great writers <laughs> for most of it and then let them finish the series as well. <laughs> and that would be my answer. Just something great and original. I always just want something original. I'm not against uh, I'm not against remakes. I'm not against uh, adaptations in any way, shape or form. But I'm always going to sort of lean more towards something interesting and original. Yeah, I'm in the same time. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm really craving it. When you've got a Disney that are producing all these remakes... It's- as, as, as interesting and good as they are I want to see these indie smaller films I want to see them get out there and be seeing more as well um, I think my favourite original Netflix show is probably The, the Get Down so well, something like Period and Fun had, The Get Down was great I haven't watched it but they've, uh, Netflix have obviously had huge success with when you think of something like Orange is the New Black which uh, is it 7 or 8 seasons that they've had um it's quite a few yeah. and they seem to be picking up these the original stuff and uh, again talk about Collide Live Katie Sackhoff was on there uh, a couple of weeks ago talking about her new show and saying the, the sort of freedom that Netflix kind of gave them um, which wasn't like 100% but no studio is going to give you necessarily going to give you a studio but they gave seem to give them quite a lot um, yeah they need to protect their investment as yeah, well yeah exactly um and I don't know what if I was to stab it doesn't have to necessarily what well, is going to be Benioff and Wise but is there like a genre or sort of TV show you'd want to you want to see you feel like there's a market for I mean I'd like to see another period piece yeah period piece is the sort of thing that I'd be interested I want to see maybe not like I don't know I was thinking sort of medieval times, so I don't want them to go too hard into... Oh, no, I, I want, you like, want... 60s or something like yeah. that. Yeah, I don't know. That's sort of what I was going to... I don't want them to go too Game of Thrones. I want them to tame it and maybe go closer this way, sort of... Uh, maybe not even as early as... Maybe it's like a 20s sort of series. might be quite cool. I think I just want the Get Down to come back. <laughs> maybe take, <laughs> like, Dan and Dave off of it. Bring give. Baz Luhrmann in, and then just make the Get Down season two. Um, it was the most expensive show Netflix has ever it? made. Well, yeah, not even like the Marvel stuff. Highest cost per episode. Yeah, oh, yeah. The get Down. Interesting. I imagine whatever Benny Offenwise do. Obviously, the other thing that Netflix have 
is the um, Miller World stuff. Um, yeah, coming soon. Uh, so I do wonder if they're going to have any sort of involvement with that, but probably not. Um, the big, big news of the week and what's going to be our main discussion uh, for this is the for this episode is the Disney had a shareholders meeting this week and came out and said uh, five particular properties that are going to get reboots or remakes or whatever you want to call them. I think they will all be reboots slash sequels, um, but we'll get to that. Um, and it, it caused a lot of controversy, especially this first one being uh, Home Alone being rebooted. And what I heard about the... I don't know, this what I heard through the... Uh, just out there was that this was going to star Melissa McCarthy and it was actually going to be the opposite sort of way around as in it's going to follow parents who have uh, there's like a kid who's stolen something from Melissa McCarthy and her husband and taking it back to his house or something that's the impression that I got from what I've heard right um, but what, what do you think about a reboot of Home Alone like do you th- do you think it works? Yeah, I think it's fine. I think they've done it like twice already, though, haven't they? <laughs> not not for a while, but obviously, even McCordy Culkin had a little bit of fun about it on Twitter, posting a picture of what like someone who's home alone now would do, which is just like sitting on a laptop. But that's exactly it. Like if you you were a kid, a kid nowadays would probably just like play Fortnite or like the entire weekend or something, and. I don't know. That just says a lot about this generation, doesn't it? I just think it's fine. I mean, like, I'm pretty sure they've already made a reboot of Home Alone, like a direct DVD yeah, one, and I'm sure they'll... Like, these things just happen. I don't know why people, you know, have a problem with it all the time. The original's still going to be there. Yeah, exactly. And that's kind of the attitude I have with all of them, especially, I know we've spoken quite a lot about it, but uh, with all the Disney remakes, I, I don't think... It takes away anything if you if you don't like the look of like a Lion King or Aladdin, then you don't have to watch it. If you do watch it and don't like it, then you've still got the original one to go back to. It's not you don't have to you don't have to enjoy both. Yep, it's not replaced no, it exactly. It's not <laughs> that's not really the point of it. Um, sometimes they're better, sometimes they're not. Uh, if you look at like a Cinderella, if you look at a Dumbo. Um, weirdly, my brother said earlier. Uh, he won't listen to this, so it's fine. Um, he uh, he didn't like Aladdin. He well, no, he started to watch Aladdin, uh, but walked out after the first twenty minutes. Um, what? Yeah, um, because he didn't. He, he I think his his favorite uh, film, Disney film, is Aladdin, and he just hated what they did with it. Um, he hasn't. Bet he got to see what they did well, with exactly. it. <laughs> That's what I said to him. Um, didn't like the look of Lion King, and uh, he then made a comment that Dumbo was the best received one that he's heard, which is like the complete opposite. Um, yeah, where did he I hear that? I don't know. That's Dumbo. Did you watch Dumbo? No, w- 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 wouldn't go but near it. I I felt like I had to because of watching everything, but that was if you can rank all three of those. I, I'd put, this year I'd put Aladdin at the top Lion King just underneath excuse me um, only just I think so I think it's close uh, uh, depending on what sort of mood I'm in I think, I think the more I've thought about Aladdin the more I've enjoyed it looking back on it but maybe that's just I loved Aladdin yeah I really enjoyed it and um, did not love the Lion King I, I, no I really did enjoy the Lion King um I appreciate what they did with it. It like the way I kind of ranked it was obviously I looked at the original. That's a five star film. The original. Mm. No? It's like maybe I'd four. Give it a five. For me that's like perfect animation. Like the perfect sort of animation film. Um and I kind of like took away like I didn't think some of the casting in the new one was great. I didn't think some of the dialogue was great. Um yeah, the emotionless sort of thing, it didn't bother me as much, but like, at times it did. Um, so I only like deducted like two marks, so I'd, I think I'd give it four out of five, the new one. I'd probably give the new one like a 2.5. I, 
I don't know. Was it the um, was it the emotionless animals that? It was just flat. It was just it went like scene to scene without any like real motivation, and like the new song was terrible, and like it just sort of felt like oh okay, I guess we're here now. It just didn't feel there was no flow or rhythm to it, or it just felt flat. Speaking of CGI animals, um, we're gonna we kind of already knew this, but we're gonna get a continuation of the Apes franchise. Obviously, we had Rise, Dawn, and then War. Um, yeah, no, that always throws me off. But yeah, that was the right. But we're going to continue with that. And obviously, the end of war leaves it open for potentially. There's not like a. There's not a to be continued. It's a. There's an open ending, and uh, as to where we could see more. So. Well, there's still an astronaut waiting to come back, isn't what, there? <laughs> do, you, do you think that's what they're going to do? Do you think we're going to get a? a, a I sort think so. Of remake I think so. Of the original Plan of the Apes. They s- they've been set it up since the first one. They have, but because it's a remakey sort of thing, I think we'll probably get one more film at least before we do Planet of the Apes. I don't know what they'd call it. I don't know. I think the next trilogy now would be you think that, like the, the Planet original of the Apes. Planet of the yeah. Apes trilogy, or like their own version, or just like the, the next version yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah. I I would be. I don't know. It's mad to see how far animals came during just that time of. Like obviously, Rise, Dawn, and War were uh, revolutionary in the way that, like, uh, what we'd seen from a motion capture performance before, and how realistic Caesar looked in those films. But he comes a long way, look-wise, from where Caesar is in the CGI of it, from Rise to War, and uh, like, how much further potentially five years away perhaps before we see whatever at least before we see a planet of the apes next film i'm interested to see how much further i don't and what they can do to make uh i don't know if they even can make animals look any better than they do in war we'll see they might have said that about the scorpion thing (laughs) 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 i I don't think so did you watch uh corridor crew's video on that yeah yeah of course um the next one that we're gonna get a reboot, and this one for me kind of makes the most sense. And I think there's more most, maybe not the most sense because apes, I guess, makes the most sense. But this one, there's room to do it because it's not at the museum. You can easily just do a different museum, right? Yeah, I guess. I think yeah. Again, it makes sense. They make money. If it makes dollars, it makes it sense. It does. Uh, obviously, um, I don't think I don't think it'd be Ben Stiller coming back for this one I don't think it would be the Natural History Museum in New York uh, I can't even remember what happened at the end of the third one but I remember Robin Williams like gives that was his last performance and I almost cried um, I think the day we're recording this podcast it's been five years since he passed away oh wow sad time um, but what museum would you like them to do for another museum is there a you don't say like Old Trafford Museum <laughs> <laughs> that'd be great though right it kind of would be great <laughs> but actually that, that was the third one they go to England and do I think if they ones. just did like like Madame Two That's Swords exactly what I think because obviously it's and it's just like a load of like modern celebrities that are still alive ah oh, you know I was thinking that earlier but I never really thought about it but now I'm thinking about it even more and that is the correct answer like yeah that's what you have to do obviously yeah. it's now with Disney who obviously own all these characters um, this is this is great we've just we've just wrapped our Lion King review we've just wrapped our in development <laughs> yes that's true we've got uh, we're, yeah we can do these all as in developments like going further into more detail um, the other two that we kind of heard about that we're going to get are cheaper by the dozen um, yeah, I mean, it's been remade before. Has it? Yeah, the original came out in like 1950. Oh, I didn't know that. That's a new fact for me. I don't even, I really don't remember this. I've only ever watched those films as a child and I have no desire to go back to them. I've heard they were right. So, I mean, there's no like a, there's no, like a big uproar about it. And it's like, well, if you're so against remakes, then you wouldn't have had the Steve Martin one that you liked. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's just stop it. Um, <laughs> and the last one, which. Um, will 100% be more of a continuation will be Diary of a Wimpy Kid um, yeah I don't know 
obviously there's a market for those. I don't know how well they do at the box office, um, but the books. I've never seen one, but I, I know there's like I've got family younger than me, generations younger than me that are really into it. So I guess it's just not my. I was too yeah, old for it. It's I think. that sort of market, and we'll talk about it in a little bit when we talk about box office. But I think it's a similar sort of market to something else that came out this weekend. I think. Um, let's go into box office. Um, if you listened to our last podcast on Monday, we kind of went through last weekend's box office on there. Um, we're going to have to do a similar sort of thing today. Um, but if you did listen to last week's... Um, oh, yeah. I didn't even realise that would be today as well. Yeah. <laughs> estimates yeah, for Yeah, estimates have been out, and uh, I unfortunately did see them. So I will withdraw from the competition this week. So you have an open shot. You have an open goal. Oh, like freebie. Like Sunderland's striker did against Ipswich yesterday. Um, that's a reference that no one will get. <laughs> um, no, because no one watches League One. It was a good match um, <laughs> for the first half. The first half was great. Um, uh, Ipswich. But you enjoyed the Liverpool game, Liverpool, eh? Again, first half was great. <laughs> I was loving it. I was all about it. If you follow me on Twitter, you would have saw my, seen my, me loving life, living the dream. Oh, I was loving life and living the dream today, let me tell I you. I imagine. Um, that was I don't know I didn't actually watch the match today but uh, just had the score coming up on my list I don't know poor Chelsea uh, box office <laughs> no 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 poor Chelsea <laughs> um, if you listened to last week's you know the uh, Tommy took the lead and then I swiftly drew it back level but now you have an open goal because I have seen I know where the top three I think I know what the top three are um, because it came off on my Facebook so I think it's only fair that I bow out of this week's competition um, I don't. Okay. I don't want to cheat. But maybe well, I should do my box office predictions earlier in the weekend, so that I don't. <laughs> so that I don't cheat. Um, we've got quite a lot of films coming out this weekend, or well, that came out this weekend. We had uh, the Art of Racing in the Rain, uh, some film called Brian Banks, which I've never heard of, uh, Dora and the Lost City of Gold, The Kitchen, and Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. Um, I think I think some of those would be in the top five. I think <laughs> one, two, three. That well, you, they could technically be all five. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sneakily reveal some of my prediction in saying that it's not all five. <laughs> I can quite handily. <laughs> uh, last weekend's box office it was very close. I can't remember how much we separated by, but it was. Oh no, we had different bottom two, didn't we? That was a week before, yeah. a bit like uh, hundreds of millions. I think my numbers oh, were yeah. closer on them, we, but you had the right yes. order. Um, and we spoke about how the estimates might have changed things. Um, just oh, they, they didn't, didn't change did they? Anything. Yeah. So it's still four four, but you have an open goal to take away the a point from today. I don't know how. Sorry. I don't know what the stipulation for this is. Like, do you have to get what? a certain amount right? Only if I get five out of five. Okay, fine. <laughs> okay, I mean, fine. Okay. Right? <laughs> Unless you want to set like a, I have to be within like five million either side of number one or would, something. If you want to go crazy, would we give the point if we both got like four out of four, but like different four out of fours? We would have done a tiebreaker. I don't know. Yeah, fine. You could just five out of five, whatever. That's the... All right, let's go. Okay. Number five. I could be wrong. I could, <laughs> I could just start off and be like, oh no, you, you've not got it. Or well, do you want Number me to five. do them one at a time? Once, or do you want me to do it? Once upon a time in Hollywood. What number? Yeah, go on. I said that number five. Oh, yeah. how much? 11 million. It, that number five was once upon a time in Hollywood with 11.6 million estimate. Oh, I'll that. take that. One for one. This is dramatic. Number four. Scary stories. How much? 15 million. What if I told you it wasn't at number four? <laughs> oh, sh- shoot. It's not at number four. Damn it. Is it number three? It's not number three. No Go way. Do, do a list. Well, number three, I had Lion King at 19 million. Mm-hmm. Number two, I had oh, Dora and Lion the Lost King City. Is three. At okay. 20 million. Too close. That's close. So then Dora must have underperformed at 21 million 
for, from 21 million. Dora so what was did it, yeah. in fourth place with 17 million. Jeez. And, but I've actually heard really good things about it. That's really fun summer film. Um, Apparently not. And, um, and then Hobbs and Shaw I've got at 27 million. So at number two was Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark with 20.8 million. And then Hobbs and Shaw was number one with 25.4. Um, it's the so what was what was Dora? Uh, Seventeen Sorry? million. Wow. So and how much was Hobbs and Shaw? Sorry, five point four. Okay, so it was a little, a little over. over. That. Um, for anyone that cares, Art of Racing was six, um, but a long way off. And so was The Kitchen, which um, I've heard terrible yeah, things about that film. I've heard good things. And anyone, if for anyone who knows or cares about Brian Banks, that was in twelfth. Um, making two million. Sorry, Brian. Sorry, Brian. Um, no point for you there. You've missed an open goal. Yep. What are you gonna do? Um, I don't know. Would you no, have guessed I, that? I, I, I probably would have gone similar and put Dora second. Um, I might have gone five. Once upon a time, four. Lion King. I would probably would have done three. Scary stories, and then two. Dora. But I don't know. It is re- interesting. I, I wonder what it is. I know there's the horror market, and they tend to make normally those sort of films about twenty million. So that aspect of it doesn't surprise me. I think it's the Guillermo sort of name to it. I don't know what rating Scary Stories has got actually, because I'm not sure that it's R. I feel like it might be PG thirteen, which might help mm. out. Um, where are you, IMDb? There you are. And no, oh no, it's just because uh, UK fifteen, whatever. Um, but yeah, and that's it for our predictions, and that's it for the show this week. And as always, go and check us out on social media. Are we doing anything about the giveaway, or is that still open? Uh, we'll announce it on social we'll media this it on week. Media. So if you're listening to this, quickly go and enter. It's been a week tomorrow, it right? It has been a week. Tomorrow, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll announce it on social okay. media tomorrow. Uh, so you've got until tomorrow, which the show will be out. So you probably haven't entered it if you're listening to it, and it will be <laughs> the show already out. Um, okay, so congratulations, so congratulations to our winners. To the winners, um, and we will we'll let you know who won everywhere on social media, uh, which is on Facebook. If you search for Insider Network, and Insider Network on Instagram and Insider Network underscore on Twitter you can find Tommy at Mr. TT Green you can find me at Floodgate28 go and check out our In Dispute that was out during the week and check out whatever we've got coming up during the week as well on Wednesday and we will see you next week for the next week's In Case You Missed It Bye Bye.